Hello everyone, P from 41 here. So I wanted to uh, share some of the upgrades I've made to my skeleton altar slash cauldron thing that I use for Halloween. I've made some videos in the past mainly of the skull popper uh, that's in the cauldron and I'll put a link to those videos. But this is going to be about the newest upgrades that I've done to this thing. So the first thing I did is I added these green LEDs around the inside of the cauldron and they're running off one of those cheap little LED flashes which is why they're getting dimmer and brighter. They do a number of functions. This one tends to default to strobe when you first turn it on but I like this one the best. It gives it kind of a glowing simmering look. Now when this is fully set up I have a fog machine and cooler underneath it which pipes fog in through this hole and then I also fill the bottom with ice um, just to get that fog as cool as possible so it'll sit there and with the LED lights it'll glow green which is a really cool effect. I also had a speaker in here this year which played uh, bubbling sound effects so it ended up turning out really well and I'm really happy with the way it looked. Uh, we've also of course still have the skull popper which pops up. Nothing's really changed on that front. Now the next thing is this year I added a few air blasters. So this uh, altar has one as well right down there. You can see the uh, nozzle and it's set up on a remote. So you just hit the button and it'll give a quick blast of air. It really startles people. Now the big one and the one I'm happiest with is actually hidden at the bottom. So if I put my foot right about there, hit the button and the arm swings out, grabs your ankle, and that really freaks people out. Uh, and then you hit the button again, and it folds back in, ready for the next victim. So how does this work? We'll just pull this plastic off. We're going to start with the air blaster, simply because that's the simplest one. So there's not a whole lot to it. It's just a 12 volt, 1 8 solenoid valve. Uh, we got our air coming in and then on the outlet side we just have a little air nozzle fitting uh, so it gives out a quick blast of air and people feel it on their ankles and that uh, startles them. So the uh, ankle grabber is a little more involved. You can get the camera under here so you can see. So it's using another one of my homemade pneumatic cylinders that's made from a screen door closer and I'll put a link to that video as well. So that 2x4 makes up the base for it. We just got a standard hinge. Then on the end here we have a bracket welded onto the hinge. Let me just cut this zip tie and get this sleeve back. Now I had to add the zip tie. It wasn't there originally but very quickly what happened is the force would cause the whole thing, the sleeve to move forward and then it just looked weird. It's just got some plastic bags stuffed in there so that it's a little bit bigger. So we've got the bracket here and then also welded onto the hinge is a half inch rod and this comes out to about here. And after that, it's just some CPVC, which is hose clamped on there. I went with CPVC because it flexes a bit. There wasn't uh, going to be a chance of this hurting anybody because it would simply flex out of the way. Now, we have an adjustable tether, which goes right to the same pin that the actuator is connected to. Anytime I make one of these, it's always got to have a tether because uh, especially if these are set at a higher pressure, uh, these pneumatic actuators will destroy stuff. And we did not want it reaching the limits of this hinge because it probably would have ripped it right out of the wood. So moving on to the back side, cover the controls. So I'll start with the pneumatics. This year I decided to go ahead and run an auxiliary air tank. And the reason I did that is because with the air blasters that I was planning on using, I didn't want to risk running out of air. So this is just an old air compressor tank. We've got our feed line going in here. Now this tank is completely unregulated. It runs at whatever pressure the compressor feeding it gives it. And with the compressor I use on Halloween, it runs at about 125 PSI. So up here we have our manifold to send air to the various props. This blue line is for the air blaster up front and you notice it's completely unregulated. 
All of the air blasters that I use run off straight tank pressure. They are not regulated in any way, shape, or form. However, all of the uh, props that use pneumatic cylinders do have to be regulated. So over here, we have the existing uh, solenoid valve and regulator that I've always used for the skull popper. I just added another T to the top so we can add more props on the end there. And then over here, we have another regulator and solenoid valve with the line that runs down to our angle grabber and you can see the cylinder down there. Uh, I would have liked to run one air supply with run regulator uh, to all of my props. Unfortunately, because of different designs, they all require a different air pressure to operate properly. So this one runs at about a little under 60 PSI, but the ankle grabber here uh, runs well at about 30 or so. And we really don't want to risk running too much pressure on the ankle grabber because it could break itself or it could potentially uh, you know, injure somebody and we really don't want that. So for controls, as always, I'm just using these little remote control outlet modules uh, that you can get uh, at any store during, you know, Christmas or whatever. Same one I've always used with the remote. And as I've explained in other videos, these work really well because it gives me uh, three different functions, which we used up all of them this year. And I can turn them on and leave them on if I want to. And it's just really easy. Now for the air blasters, we can't use something like that because you have to turn them on and off manually. We need something that just has a momentary actuation. So for that, down here, we'll start with the power supply. This is just an old computer power supply. It's been modified to be a bench power supply. And we're just pulling 12 volts off of this. Uh, so this is the LED flasher module for the cauldron. And then over here, this feeds our controls for the air blaster. So this is just a simple uh, four channel remote module. And it comes with these little uh, four button key fobs. You can get these really cheap off eBay or Amazon. And when you hit the button, it just sends 12 volts to the air blaster solenoid to give you a little blast of air. So you just hit the button and you get your little blast of air. So yeah, that about does it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at some of my Halloween stuff. I'll have some other relevant videos linked down below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Now unfortunately I have to do the part that everybody hates. Put it in storage until next year.